dear students and my dear viewers welcome back in the previous session we have discussed about um, the vascular segments of the kidney now in this session we are going to discuss about the renal circulation or blood supply to the kidneys and also in this session we are going to discuss about the nerve supply as well as the lymphatic drainage of the kidney okay so before starting this renal circulation again we are going to brush up the parts of the structure of the kidney so so this is the coronal section through our naked eye itself we can differentiate the uh, regions the outer region is called as cortex which is uh, reddish uh, brown in color and the inner one is called as uh, medulla so one is medulla so which is uh, pale in color and next one is the renal sinus so these are the three areas we can see in the coronal section of the kidney okay and the renal pyramid uh, the renal medulla is made up of with pyramids so here we can see the number of pyramids here so and this apices of this pyramids open into the minor calyx so which is the division of major calyx and uh, uh, this major calyx is continuous or the division of the renal pelvis which is the part of the ureter expanded part of the ureter okay next and the outer cortex is um, divisible into two parts one is the cortical arches or cortical lobules uh, these cortical arches or lobules which forms the caps of the renal pyramids which forms caps of the uh, renal pyramids and next part is the renal columns these renal columns uh, where the cortex dip in between the pyramids okay and um, another term related to the kidney is the lobe of the kidney each pyramid okay each pyramid along with its um, cortical arch wo overlying with the cortical arch is called as lobe of the kidney okay yes so uh, and in the renal sinus we can see the branches of renal artery tributaries of renal vein as well as the renal pelvis the renal pelvis which is divided into major calyx and as well as the minor calyx these are the structures which are seen over the kidney why we are discussing the parts again means the name of the arteries um, and also the veins are related to the to these parts of the kidney only so now we will see uh, the branches of the renal artery which supplies the kidney okay as we know that the artery which is supplying the kidney is the renal artery which is a branch of abdominal aorta at the level of l2 okay and this renal artery divides into anterior bigger anterior uh, branch as well as the smaller posterior one and this bigger one on the anterior aspect gives segmental branches four segmental branches one is um, apical uh, and uh, upper lower and the basal segments okay on the anterior side so each segmental branch each segmental branch gives a lobar branch so here this one is the lobar branch this lobar branch uh, runs towards the pyramid so it is reaching towards the pyramid so here you can see all these are the lobar branches lobar arteries which are uh, the branches of segmental branches of the renal artery okay so these are the lobar arteries which run towards the pyramid so it is running towards the pyramid only okay up to here it, this one is called as lobar artery 
so this is, these are the lobar arteries now coming to the interlobar arteries so in between the pyramids so i am taking this uh, lobar artery so in between the pyramids it is giving branches in between the lobes so this is one lobe and this is another lobe in between the two lobes so it is giving branches the lobar artery is divided into two branches these are called as interlobar arteries so the green color you can see these are the interlobar arteries so first one is the renal artery anterior division segmental branches or segmental arteries segmental arteries gives lobar arteries and this lobar artery gives interlobar arteries okay so this interlobar arteries run up to the cortico medullary junction so here these are the points cortico medullary junction where it gives another branch called as arcuate branches so which run on the base of the pyramid so these arcuate branches or right angles to the interlobar arteries okay and these arcuate arteries gives number of branches and this arcuate arteries never anastomoses but it gives number of branches so you can see very small branches which runs towards the cortex and it will reach to the renal capsule at the renal capsule it gives small twigs to the renal capsule so this is uh, these small branches which are coming from the arcuate arteries are called as interlobular arteries interlobular arteries okay this interlobular arteries gives number of side branches these side branches are called as afferent arterioles afferent arterioles now again we will see what what are the branches which are coming from the abdominal aorta up to the afferent arteriole means one is the abdominal aorta at the l2 it gives renal artery the renal artery gives five segmental branches each segmental branch gives lobar artery the lobar artery each lobar artery gives interlobar artery and this interlobar artery gives arcuate and this arcuate artery gives interlobular artery and this interlobular artery gives number of side branches called as afferent arteriole so this afferent arteriole will pierce into the bowman's capsule okay of a, a renal corpuscle to form a capillary cluster called glomerulus glomerulus inside the bowman's capsule okay so next this afferent arteriole finally end up with the cluster of capillaries called as glomerulus so what happened once it enters into the glomerulus so here we can see an excellent pic here so this one is the afferent arteriole here so again we can see here the renal artery which is coming from the abdominal aorta the renal artery gives segmental artery and next interlobar artery it gives arcuate and interlobular artery and the side branch so here we can see this is the magnification of this part so what happened the side branch of interlobular artery is called as afferent arteriole this afferent arteriole pierces the bowman's capsule and it um, end up with the tuft of capillaries called as glomerulus from the glomerulus again after filtration uh, it gives out a branch called as efferent arteriole this efferent arteriole forms a peritubular capillaries around the uh, proximal convoluted tubule and um, distal convoluted tubule 
and some part of descending and ascending limb these are located on the cortex and again so these capillaries also occupies the loop of henle which is uh, located in the medulla also so where the selective reabsorption taking place and finally uh, this uh, after filtered blood is end up into the uh, interlobular vein these are the interlobular veins this is also the side tributary of the interlobular vein so we all we know that the artery always um the vein always follows the artery so here we are having the afferent arterial and we are getting the uh uh this um, veins which are collected into the inter lobular vein so here we are having the interlobular artery and these are the interlobular vein and after that interlobular vein what is the next uh, uh, tributary next bigger one this is the arcuate vein so on the other hand we are having the arcuate um, artery so here arcuate vein and interlobar vein and finally it reaches to the renal vein the renal vein finally opens into the inferior vena cava so this is the thing happening in the renal circulation okay yes again we will uh, see the uh, flow chart of this blood supply of the kidney one is the abdominal aorta at the l2 level gives renal artery five segmental branches each segmental artery gives lobar artery interlobar artery and then arcuate and then it enters into interlobular efferent arterial glomerulus and then efferent arterial so in the efferent arterial it enters the peritubular flexus so which finally this uh, capillaries opens into the inter lobular vein and which in turns open into the arcuate vein interlobar vein lobar vein segmental vein and five segmental veins renal vein and the inferior vena cava final so this all all about the blood supply of the kidney now we will move on to the nerve supply of the kidney so the nerve supply of the kidney is uh, brought about by the renal plexus of nerves containing sympathetic and parasympathetic elements reach the kidney along the renal arteries here you can find this is the renal artery okay so this is the renal artery you can see which is coming from the abdominal aorta and this renal plexus so oh, over the renal artery you can see the number of uh, nerves here uh, a network of uh, nerves are present which are the branches of celiac ganglion so here you can see here this is the celiac uh, trunk on celiac ganglion inside so this renal plexus is a branch of this celiac ganglion and the sympathetic fibers are derived from T10 to L1 segments of the cord, and here you can see the parasympathetic innervation. So the parasympathetic innervation is brought about the vagal. So uh, that means right side vagal and uh, left side vagal. Now which supplies the kidneys here. So the parasympathetic innervation is brought about by the vagal. So this is about the now supply of the kidney now we will move on to the lymphatic uh, drainage of the kidney here so the lymphatics of the kidney come out along the renal veins so the lymph normally we know that the basic uh, point of the uh, lymphatic drainage is all lymphatics in the body finally uh, open into the uh, inferior vena cava that is the uh, inferior as well as the superior vena cava so uh, into the finally it ends up into the venous drainage okay so all the it may be a, um, 
uh, right uh, thoracic duct and left thoracic duct those two also finally open into this um, vena cava only okay so the lymphatics of the kidney so so the lymph vessels are also associated with the arteries and the veins because the lymph is carrying the fluid from the interstitial spaces so, okay so the lymphatics of the kidney come out along the lymphatics of the kidney come out along with the renal veins come out along with the renal veins it is also associated with the uh, renal veins and end up in the lateral aortic nodes these end up into the lateral aortic nodes which is situated on the sides of the abdominal aorta near the origin of the renal artery near the origin of the renal artery on the lateral sides of the aorta we we can see the lateral aortic nodes where the lymphatics of the kidney come out along the renal veins and end up into this lateral aortic nodes so these are all about the uh, lymphatic drainage of the kidney as well as the nerve supply and the renal circulation of the kidney okay in the next session we are going to discuss about um, some of the uh, applied aspects of the kidney that is applied anatomy uh, and also some of the developmental uh, changes uh, which are occurring uh, in the formation of the kidney thank you